Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, I am going to be trying to explain you how voltage-gated potassium channels work by using the Hodgkin-Huxley model in less than 10 minutes. So with that, let's give it a go. So here we have our hypothetical cell that separates two fluid compartments, the fluid inside the cell and the fluid outside the cell. Now inside the cell, we only have one solute and it's going to be potassium. And outside the cell, we also only have one solute, which is also going to be potassium. Inside the plasma membrane, we have a voltage-gated potassium channel. And when this voltage-gated potassium channel opens, the electrochemical gradient will favor the movement of potassium from the inside of the cell to the outside of the cell. Now, as physiologists, we want to have a much more rigorous understanding of this voltage-gated ion channel and how it works. So the way that we will do this is through a voltage clamp. So a voltage clamp you can think of as a micropipette, and this pipette is so small that it can basically adhere to the plasma membrane of a cell and surround around one individual channel, And as we see in this picture right here. And what the lab technician will do is that they will apply a suction onto this pipette, which will basically seal the potassium channel both electrically and physically from the environment. The next step will be to add a, uh, apply a voltage to this channel in order to measure how this channel is going to react to this voltage. And they will primarily do this by measuring the current in response to a voltage change. So this is the method that we are going to use in this experiment here. So in this experiment, we are going to be evaluating how a potassium voltage-gated potassium channel will act with a depolarization voltage. So our stimulus through the voltage clamp is going to be a depolarizing stimulus. So what we're going to do is we're going to administer a step depolarization. And a step depolarization is basically when we administer a positive voltage to a channel and hold that positive voltage for some time and then take it off. And what we're going to be doing during that stimulus is measuring the current flow through the voltage-gated potassium channel. So what we're going to see is something like this. So this right here is showing the step depolarization. So what we see here is that the cell is in initially at rest, and then we add the stimulus around here. And what we see when we add the stimulus is that the voltage of the cell will rapidly increase up to a certain point. We hold that voltage for a certain length of time, and then after that length of time, which I don't show here, the uh, voltage is taken off and the cell goes back to rest. And what we do is we measure the current that is going to flow through the channel as a result of this depolarization. So remember that an outward current is going to be positive. So an outward current is when current flows from the inside to the outside of the cell. And an inward current is going to be negative, where current flows from the outside to the inside. So what do we see in this experiment here? Well, in this first trial here, what we see is that from this depolarization, what we see is that, first of all, the voltage-gated potassium channel takes a while to open. Why? Well, the reason why is because the stimulus starts around here. So if we correlate that to this graph, what we see is that it takes some time for any current to pass through. And when the, vo and when the voltage-gated potassium channel eventually opens, we see a strong outward current, and as we keep that stimulus on the voltage-gated potassium channel, the current stays at a constant level for a long period of time. So what we see from this trial is that the voltage-gated potassium channel opens in response to depolarization, but it opens really slowly, but once it gets open, it stays open for a long period of time. So let's confirm our result with another trial. So in trial two, we see a similar sort of result. And we see here that the potassium channel opens in response to depolarization, but it does so very slowly. And when it gets open, it stays open for a long period of time. Let's do a third trial. In the third trial, we see a similar result again. What we see is that the voltage-gated potassium channel opens in response to depolarization, but it opens slowly, and when it stays open, it's, 
and when it gets open, it stays open for a, a long period of time. So in summary, from this experiment, we see that voltage-gated potassium channels are opened slowly by depolarization. They remain closed for most of the time, and when they are opened, they stay open for a long period of time. Now, in order to understand why this is true, we have to look at the energy diagram for the voltage-gated potassium channel. And we're gonna look at it in two states, the resting or hyperpolarized state. And remember that the resting or hyperpolarized state is when the cell membrane potential is negative. And we're also gonna look at it in a depolarized state where the cell membrane is going to be positive. And we're gonna be looking at it in terms of the energy level. In other words, if a certain state has more energy, the more energy that it has, the more unstable that it is. So let's take a look. So inside the um, resting or hyperpolarized state, we see two different states that this voltage-gated potassium channel can occupy, the open state and the closed state. And what we see in the resting or hyperpolarized state is that the open state is, has more energy than the closed state. So therefore, the closed state is more stable than the open state. Now let's look at the depolarized state of the cell. We still see that there are two states, the open and the closed state. However, when the cell is depolarized, the energy of the open state decreases, as we can see comparing the, this state to this state, and the energy of the closed state increases. So therefore, in the depolarized state, the open state is more stable than the closed state. And this is why when the voltage-gated potassium channel is exposed to depolarization, it opens. So that is why it opens, because the open state is more stable than the closed state when the cell is depolarized. So what, is the, what are the results of this energy diagram? In the resting or hyperpolarized state, the closed state is more stable than the open. And in the depolarized state, the open is more stable than the closed. So in order to understand this a little bit better, we are going to use the Hodgkin-Huxley model, or HHM. And the HHM is a model that is used to describe both the mechanics and kinetics of voltage-gated ion channels. And the HHM predicts that the voltage-gated potassium channel has two different states. The first state is the open state, where the channel will conduct a current. And the second state is a closed state, where the channel will not conduct a current. Now, the HHM proposes that there is only one type of gate in the voltage-gated potassium channel. And this gate is the N gates. And N gates are activation gates, and they are gates that open in response to depolarization. But they do so very slowly. And the end gates will close in response to hyperpolarization, and they will do so slowly. Now, inside the voltage-gated potassium channel, there are four end gates. And in order for the channel to be open, all of the gates must be open. Now, it's important to realize that each gate is going to be independent of the other. So if this end gate is open, it is possible for all of the other end gates to still be closed. And, and um, we can apply this to any of the gates. And it's important to realize that each end gate has its own individual probability of being open at a certain voltage. Therefore, what we can do in order to um, calculate the probability of the voltage-gated potassium channel being open at a certain voltage is multiply the individual probabilities together. Now, the important thing that I want to take note of here is that the, each of these end gates have to be, has to be open in order for the channel to conduct current. So let's put it all together by using an, an experiment. So in this experiment, we are going to apply a step depolarization over, cer over a certain period of time. And what we're going to do is look at a an individual voltage-gated potassium channel during different points of the experiment. So let's take a look. So this first channel that we see here, we are looking at this channel in the resting state. So before we put down the stimulus. So what we see here is that in the resting potential, so in a negative voltage, what we see here is that the all of the end gates will tend to be closed. And as a result, there will be no current passing through the channel. 
So let's take a look when we start the depolarization. When we start the depolarization, we still see that all the end gates are closed. And even though the end gates open in response to depolarization, they do so slowly. So therefore, early in the depolarization, the channel still remains closed. As we go further into the stimulus, into the depolarizing stimulus, what we will see is that maybe some end gates will open, but the channel is still going to be closed because once again, these end gates open really slowly in response to depolarization. As we go further into the depolarization, later into it, what we will see is that finally in this voltage gated ion channel, all of the all of the end gates are going to be open. So therefore, it's not until this point that we start conducting current. And remember that the reason why for this is because the end gates open in response to depolarization, but they do so really slowly. So what happens when we take the stimulus off? When we take the stimulus off and bring the cell back to rest, what we see is that the end gates are still all open because they also close slowly. If we go further into the resting state, so a further amount of time away from the stimulus, what we see is that some of the end gates are closing in response to this hyperpolarization, and it's not until a long time after the stimulus has been put onto the cell that we see all of the end gates closed and no current passing through. So therefore, what this whole slide is trying to tell you is that the end gates of the voltage-gated potassium channel open in response to depolarization, but they do so slowly. And the end gates close in response to hyperpolarization, and they do so slowly as well. So therefore, in this diagram, what we see here is that all of these three states, there is going to be no current passing through it. This is because the voltage-gated potassium channel is closed. In these two states, Potassium will be leaving through, this, through the channel, and this is because all of the end gates are open, so therefore the channel is open. And in these last two uh, pictures here, there is going to be no current passing through the voltage-gated potassium channel because the, not all of the end gates are open. So therefore, in order to pass current through a voltage-gated potassium channel, we have to have all of the gates open. So that is all I have today for the voltage-gated potassium channel. I hope this helped you understand the channel much better, and I hope to see you in the next video.